So in this video, I'll be teaching you how to use an align position and align orientation constraint in Roblox Studio to tween your models. So I'll start by going over the basics of each of these constraints, and then I'll combine them with the help of a little script to get this nice little animation of this cool rotating elevator that you see right here. So if you're interested in that, make sure to watch the video and like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and make sure to comment down below. Also join my Discord, link is in the description, where this is my server where we can just talk, we have some developer discussions, and you can post your cool creations there as well. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So align position and align orientation are forces or like a constraint and Roblox you can find them by going to model and create they're down here and they do exactly what they tell you they do so I'm going to start by creating a part here's our part I'm just going to duplicate this part with control D and here is another part so we have two parts here now we can go to model, create, then go to align position. Doesn't really matter where you click. This is just for demonstration purposes. So you want to click on one of the parts once and then click on another part once. And you can see it draws out this line. By the way, if you can't see this, go to model, then constraint details, and then also optionally draw on top. I like to keep that on. It just makes it a little bit easier. And this gives you some information. So you can see this arrow. It's showing that this part will be attracted to this part. So if we run this, like this is without looking at any of the properties, you can see that it's attracted. And the reason it goes infinitely is because the reaction force is not enabled. And this is a property. So you go into the Explorer, go to Part, and the Align Position. If you enable the reaction force, you can see there's two arrows. So they'll be pulling towards each other. And then this is sort of like a magnet. And they'll keep on trying to go towards each other until the attachments meet. And this could be cool on its own. There's also another property, apply at center of mass, which basically makes it not till the attachment meets, but just till like the center of the parts meet, which is that's pretty cool as well. And you have a few properties like match force, max velocity, and responsiveness. Those are all pretty self-explanatory, and the documentation on aligned positions is very good, so you can check that out as well. But the one of the coolest features is, is this is also what body positions don't have. This is why a line position, in certain cases, is better than a body position, and that's rigidity enabled. Rigidity enabled, my bad. So you can see as it turns the line into red and it says the attachments are not at the same location. And this forces the attachment. It uses as much force as possible to get them into the exact location where they should be. And when you're using this, it's best practice to make one of the parts like non-collidable, I think. And I'm also just going to anchor it for the purposes of this. And we're going to make it semi-transparent. So... It, when we play this, you can see, oh wait, it's on the wrong part. Let me fix that. So let me change the transparency back. There we go. Unaccurate. Because I did it on the wrong part. This is the like destination part since reaction force is not enabled. That's my bad. But we can change, we can change it to be anchored and can collide off. And you can see this part will snap to exactly where we want it to snap. And to make this even better we could turn apply at center of mass to true. So this has some interesting uh, implications, and that's basically these parts, this part will snap to the exact location of this. And since the aligned positions are physics-based, if we were to spawn in another part, and then we can create a weld and weld it to this part, if we run this, the same thing happens with two parts. So this will allow you to animate or tween models. And this is obviously a different way than how I did it in my, one of my very first videos where I used like Motor 60. But this is a pretty cool feature. But we're not done yet because now we need to align the orientation. 
And also, before we do that, you might have noticed the attachments are not really centered, so make sure to change the position to 0, 0, 0, so they're centered in the parts. That makes it better and makes it good for the future. But for your models, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm just going to put it to 0, so they snap to exactly where they're supposed to snap. And there we go. So now we can create our aligned position. So let's go to Model, Create, Align Position. But before you create it, make sure to select your attachment. And what this will do is, here's our Align Position. It sets the attachment of our Align Position to the attachment of our Align Orientation. And if you hover, you're going to have to have Draw on top for this to work. And if you hover over this part right here, then you can select it. There we go. So you can see the align orientation has the same attachment 0 and attachment 1 as our align position. And this works out pretty well because it just keeps your workspace less cluttered and it's a lot more elegant when you like move the attachments around. So in regards to the align position and its properties, it's pretty basic. The only real difference between this and align position is a primary axis only property. That basically just says the primary axis or should it like apply rotation to only the primary axis of the attachment which is the yellow arrow so in this case the yellow arrow is pointing upwards which is the y-axis so it would only apply rotational torque on the y-axis but i rarely ever use that it doesn't really matter so and i just leave the rest how it is but we want to turn rigidity rigidity enabled on and this will make it snap to where it's going so if we press play you can see it snaps exactly to where it's supposed to go and the reason these are kind of offset the attachments is because the apply at center of mass is true for all our aligned position and this allows you to have full control over this assembly or model with this singular part and you know what you can do with parts you can tween parts so I'm going to select all of these and use Control G to create a model. And I'm just going to leave the model name how it is. And then I'm going to select this part. Pro tip, you can hold Alt to select a part inside of a model. And you can click, and then we can set this, and we can rename this to our reference. This is just for our script that we're about to make. So here we have our reference part. Now we can go into Model, click the plus arrow, create a script, zoom in a little bit. And we're going to define our model, which is equal to script.parent. Then we're going to define our reference, which is equal to model.reference. And this is all the references you need. And all you have to do now is tween our reference. And the only tweens that will get applied are the position, orientation, and C-frame properties. So keep that in mind. But we're going to define our tween service, which is going to be local tween service equals game get service tween service there we go and now we're going to define our tween info which will be equal to tween info dot new two seconds easing style of enum dot easing style dot quad let's say doesn't really matter enum dot easing direction dot in out Repeat counts negative 1, so it goes infinitely. Reverses will be true, and delay time will be 0.5, let's say. And then we want to define our properties. So I'm going to start out by saying properties equals position. And we're going to set the position to our reference.position plus vector3.new 0, 10, 0. So let's basically put our part 10 studs above the reference when the tween is finished. So now let's do local tween equals tween service create we're going to send in our reference because that's the part we want to tween we're going to send in our tween info and then our properties and then of course we have to say tween play and if you don't know how tweens work i have a video on that specifically towards just tweening parts and guis so make sure to check that out so if we were to run this you can see the part moves up and down according to the reference's starting position which this is great but since we're dealing with parts and since we're dealing with tweens, we can also change the C-frame, which allows you to change the position and orientation simultaneously, which is really good. So let's set our C-frame equal. 
And don't worry that the C frame is highlighted in blue. As long as you don't call any functions on it, it should not like mess up your script. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to set our C frame equal to a new C frame. Actually, we're going to take our reference dot C frame. And then we're going to add our vector 3. Or we're first going to multiply it by C frame dot angles. And let's just say we want to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to say C frame dot angles 0 math dot rad 90. And then 0. And then we're gonna, going to add a vector 3 dot new 0 10 0. So this is basically, it seems pretty complex, but all we're doing is taking our C frame rotating it by 90 degrees that's really all you need to know about c frame dot angles if you want to learn more i touched on it a little more in depth in my last video so you can make sure to check that out and then we're adding our vector so this adds position to our c frame so if we were to play this you can see it locks in place rotates 90 degrees as it goes up which is really nice and i can also test this out with my player so if I hop on, you can see I get brought up and it spins. And it's kind of janky, but really it should not matter. And also, if you really wanted to, you could simulate this on the client, which might be a little bit better. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a really good little system that you can use to animate your models and tween your models. And it's a lot more beginner-friendly than my other version that I made a few months ago. But this one does not work as well when it comes to, like, the jitteriness. And it's probably less performant. That's just a guess. If you know of any more, more like, definite tests, then make sure to let me know down in the comments. But it works out fine. It's very, very intuitive because you're using two constraints, aligned position and aligned position orientation which align your position and align your orientation and those constraints can be used for whatever else you want so i hope you i hope i taught you a little bit about that but make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video comment any questions or suggestions down below but other than that i hope you have a nice day and goodbye